What's up, multifamily and more? Welcome to another segment of our Meeting Minutes videos. This is where Ben and I extract uh, questions from our Facebook group, Multifamily and More. And we go through a couple. We give our opinions, our thoughts, what we think is the right answer. Doesn't mean it has to be the right answer. And we'll let you know if it's just an opinion, but we'll go through and we'll make sure we add value by answering your questions right here on this uh, segment every week. If you have a question, you want to put in the group and you want it featured here, just start it with hashtag meeting minutes and we'll pull it out and try to get you featured on a future episode. Ben. All right. How you doing? First question. Wow. Geez. Okay. I was trying to like, just check in, <laughs> see how you're doing, but like first question, go for it, Ben. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, this is, this is the first question for the day, but it's not the first question for the day for us. So uh, anyways, uh, I'm doing well. And here's but you're giving secrets of like the back end recording. People well, probably yeah. haven't noticed that we're wearing the same stuff every week. You know, they may just think that we're, we're synced up like this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Anyway, first question. Uh, maybe you want to take this one. So lots of people are talking about an upcoming crash in the single family market for uh, reasons related to owners unable to pay their mortgage. And uh, the question is how will this crash? And if it all, I mean, and if it happens, uh, will affect the multifamily market? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Three? Very important question. Very important question. It's a VIQ. Um, okay, so I don't know about a crash in the single family market happening anytime soon. The dynamics aren't the same as post 08. There's got to be a correction at some point, I think, to some extent. But here's a counterpoint. There wasn't always a 30-year mortgage, right? That came about at some point to make home ownership more accessible. It's really not about value of property when you boil it down. It's really about can people afford the monthly payment? So I believe, and this is talk about opinion, your opinion. I think it's more likely that we start getting a 35 or a 40 year mortgage that takes the values of homes as they are without them going down at all over the next few years um, that allows the values to climb, but making what seems like a big dollar amount to buy more affordable at the monthly rate, at the monthly level when you pay your mortgage. I think that's more likely. I don't think, I don't think anything happens in the single family market if and until rates go up. And even then there's not a lot of supply out there and supply and demand are really the key elements of whether or not a market sustains or doesn't sustain. And then look, I'm going to always caveat this. There is no single family market. There are a billion markets across the United States. Within markets, there are markets. There are neighborhoods that are more desirable than other neighborhoods, right? So when we talk about the market generally, I know what we're saying. It's sort of like at the macro, do we see single family houses come crashing down? I don't see it for the foreseeable future. It's 2021. I still think we're a little ways away from it happening. Uh, watch it happen two days before this broadcast. Watch something happen. Uh, well, and look, I'll say this. Absent uh, uh, some sort of black swan event or, or some major crisis, but even look, the pandemic didn't do it. And as long as we can continue to print money, and I think we can continue to do that for a long time, we're probably not going to see the big dip we saw in 08 anytime soon. I just don't see that happening. I think it'll happen. I don't know how or when. I just don't think it'll happen anytime soon. The question is uh, the impact on multifamily, correct? With three question marks? Yeah. So I, 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 don't, I don't know if I see a correlation. I do know this, that with the Biden administration now proposing changes to the 1031 exchange from an investor perspective, that's going to mean more small multifamily is purchased and more single family is purchased because the proposal as is caps the, the amount that you can make on a property from rolling it in a 1031. Like as long as the, the gains are less than 500,000 with his proposal, you can roll your gains through a 1031. It still exists for that. So 200 unit property that, you know, the gains are three, 4 million. It doesn't really do much, but a a 30 unit property with a $400,000 gain, you can still 1031 that. Single family homes, individual LLCs, you can still roll that each time. So I think the single family market, if anything, because of the 1031 rule stays strong from an investor perspective. I don't know that there is a major correlation uh, to the commercial market. I mean, I, 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 I'd have to harken back to 08 a bit, but if I remember right, you know, uh, the, the working class B minus C plus type apartment community sustained pretty well because folks that had to get out of their homes went to, you know, say B class housing and the, the price of rents were a little high for those that lost jobs in the B and A class and they dropped to the B and B minus. It kind of pressed it down. It had an impact, but I think it's minimal. I, I really see multifamily sustaining over the long term as well. 
Um, I don't see a, an, an imminent correction coming there. Again, until interest rates rise, I think that's going to be the first indication of whether or not we see cap rate expansion and, and some decrease in value. But that's not really a, a single family home impact on the commercial market or on the multifamily market. So that's my take, Ben. Do you, you have anything to add to it? You look, you look. No, I mean, that was, that was a very thorough uh, answer. And I, I think you hit the nail, hit the head on the nail uh, twice. I, was gonna, I, I, would have brought, or I would have brought up the 1031 uh, exchange proposal as well. Uh, Cause I do think that's going to, um, that's going to be good for single family and that's going to be good for, for smaller uh, multifamily properties. I think it's it, you were talking about. There's no single family market. What what I mean, we do have a affordable housing market, and we're talking from you know from what we do in our experience. We invest in housing that's affordable, and and because we think that you know during times of uh, difficulty, they just get less effective. Like Jamie, I just stated, people from the A you know A move to the B to C in in, the, in difficult times. So yep, not, nothing really more to add. Yeah, I think you saw in like the, and it's a great point, Ben. Uh, I think you saw in the prior crisis, like A, a level rents, like, you know, your high end, high rise, downtown, A class rents dropped like 40%, and B was like 18%, and C was like 6%, right? Like there was an impact, but just mitigated compared to others. And, and again, I, you know, there's a cycle, it'll happen. I don't know exactly how, but I, I don't see anything imminent. I think we have a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, of a, of a runway here. <clears throat> Uh, to go and really, anytime the the Fed does pop rates and anything happens that makes people unstable, boom, they drop it right back down. And I see, if anything, I see the U.S. going to two, two fifty, three hundred percent of GDP in debt before we start seeing a crash in the market. That's just my my uh, my opinion on it. So we shall see. Would love to hear. This is a big one. Like, there's way smarter people out there that have like macro and microeconomic degrees that can comment on this. Please do let us know in the comments what your thoughts are. I'd love to learn from it. Ben knows everything, so he doesn't need to learn anything. The only thing he doesn't know, though, is that it's hit the nail on the head, not the head on the nail. So now he knows that. Hit the nail on the head. Yeah. The nail. Right. Hey, look, if this is valuable, if you're enjoying <laughs> it, if nothing else, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you don't subscribe to our channel, my friend Ben, who is a French national, will show up on your doorstep and will curse at you in the most aggressive French way that he knows how to avoid this simply subscribe, be a member of our YouTube uh, community. And we'd love to have you uh, here for other videos like this and other things that we put out there uh, as often as we possibly can. So Ben, don't curse anybody out. They all subscribed. Okay. All right. Question two for this episode is, hi, everyone. That's you and me. I have a question. We know. And I'm new to the multifamily world, so pardon my lack of knowledge. Is there a specific way to go about finding lenders for a multifamily property versus a smaller multi or single family? When he says smaller multi or she, it's two to four units or, or so essentially residential. I found an interesting deal, but I don't know how to go about looking for financing if I even should. Uh, they just graduated college. Would the bank even consider them? So they're asking, is there a way to go about finding lenders for multifamily, five plus versus single family and up to four residential? Would they even be considered uh, if they were to look for lending because they're young and just out of college? What say you, Ben? Um, right. So I guess, yeah, the, the difference is five plus units or under, it's going to be a different type of financing. If we're talking five plus units or multifamily, I mean, it's, it's just a different ball game. It's, it's different lenders. I guess the first step, uh, would be before you get financing is to work kind of on your resume, um, to be able to show a plan, talk about your experience. If you don't have experience, we talked about it in, in, in another video. The beauty of, of uh, multifamily is that you can bring partners, partners can build a team, and then you can all kind of use your combined experience, uh, to meet the criteria for those, for those lenders. Um, so, you know, at that point, then you find a local commercial lender and you start the network, um, bring them your deal book, your credibility book, your resume, whatever, whatever you have. Um, I think multifamily is mostly about the numbers, uh, and, and I guess the people that will make sure that these numbers will be good enough to pay off the debt. That's, that's what, you know, lenders want to see. So yeah, that's my take. I like it. No, it's a great point. Uh, a big difference between the two. And I think you summarized it really, really well. So kudos to you, my friend, and your glass of wine. Folks, 
Again, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Drop some comments down below on either of these topics. What do you think? What are your thoughts on this? Educate us. Let us know if we're right, wrong. Give the last person, the young man or woman who just graduated college, even better advice than we gave, than Ben gave just now, if you can. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and again, for questions that you want featured on this segment, type hashtag meeting minutes at the beginning of your question, and we will gladly extract it and do our level best to answer it uh, to the best of our ability. So Ben. No cursing? Nope. Not only if you need to, only if he needs to, and he will. I've seen it. I've seen it in gifts, French gifts that he sends. It's the weirdest thing in the world. But All right, folks, we'll see you next time.